Has this ever happened to you? You arrive at the RV park, hook up to shore power, and everything works fine. Then two days later, your lights, water pump, and some other items quit working. Or you get ready to leave and find that you cannot retract the slides or levelers as you have a dead battery. This is all too common these days as the typical RV has a more sophisticated power system than those in the past. So what is needed is some way to see if the battery is being charged. And to do that, I dusted off my battery charger monitor project and gave it an update. Let me introduce you to version 2 of my battery charger monitor. You can see that it's in a waterproof case and it has a voltmeter attached to it. And actually it is about $40 cheaper to make because I no longer am using a custom aluminum front panel. And by the way, since I need to purchase the circuit board in multiples of three, I am actually making a few extra copies and I will make these available on my website at rv-project.com. This will be a one-time opportunity to purchase one of the extra monitors that I made. When they're gone, they're gone forever. Several of my viewers have asked that I sell some of the projects, but I don't want to really get into the retail end of it. This, to me, seems to be a compromise because it allows me to recover some costs, and it allows a few of you, at least, to purchase one of these already made. But you can always build your own, as I also provide the instructions on my website to construct a project just like I've been doing since day one. To understand why your battery dies when hooked up to shore power, it is helpful to understand how the typical modern RV power system is designed. You actually have two different power systems in your RV, a 12 volt DC system supplied by the battery and a 120 volt AC system supplied by shore power when you are at a modern campground. The 12 volt DC system typically powers your lights, water pump, and circuit boards for the refrigerator, water heater, and furnace when they are using propane. Other circuits might include the booster and your TV antenna and your stereo system. These are the basic functions, other than maybe the stereo, needed when you are boondocking or dry camping. They are DC powered so that they are always available. When on AC power via the shore power pedestal, the more convenient functions of the RV are available, such as the air conditioner, microwave, wall outlets, and TV. Notice also that there is a converter powered by the shore power AC circuit that charges the battery. So, if you lose lights after a couple days when on shore power, it is likely that the converter has either a blown fuse on the DC side or the breaker has tripped on the AC side. As well, many RVs have a master battery disconnect switch. If turned off, it will also prevent charging of the battery, but you won't know that until you unplug from shore power as the converter will supply the 12 volts to DC for the lights and water pump whether or not the battery is connected. Unfortunately, the battery disconnect switch in my RV is in the storage bay, and when I've loaded things like lawn chairs, a couple of times I've snagged a switch handle with a lawn chair and actually shut off the power switch. Of course, I don't know that, and next thing I know, the battery is discharged. And finally, an alternate method of charging the battery is also possible via the 7-pin wiring harness when connected to the tow vehicle and the alternator is now charging the battery. And you can see where I put the charger monitor in the schematic, right at the battery. So how do you tell if the battery is receiving a charge? The simple way is to measure the voltage at the battery. Let's look at how a battery behaves in the discharge state. When a battery is fully charged, it will provide 12.6 volts DC. This is for a flooded lead acid deep cycle battery. AGM and lithium batteries will have slightly different voltages. When a battery is around 50% charged, it will drop to around 12.2 volts DC, and a fully discharged battery will be less than 12 volts DC. We can also determine the state of the charger. These days, most RVs have a three-stage charger, also called a smart charger. It will apply the correct charge to the battery depending on the state of charge in the battery. For example, if the battery is less than 80% charged, a bulk charge of about 14.4 volts DC is applied to the battery. 
This can be considered a rapid charge and will actually heat up the battery a bit as it charges. If the battery is allowed to go into overcharge at this voltage, the electrolyte will begin to boil and a loss of water will be experienced. This is a major reason for loss of water in a battery. To prevent this from happening, when the battery reaches 80% charge, a smart charger will go into normal or absorption mode and the voltage will be reduced on the battery to about 13.5 volts DC. This is a lower rate of charge, but it allows the battery to cool down so that it can reach the 100% charged point. When a battery becomes 100% charged, the smart charger will go into trickle or float mode and reduce the charge voltage even more to around 12.9 volts DC. This is a maintenance or top off charge and it is low enough that the battery can remain in the overcharged state without boiling off any water. So you see, we can determine the charger state depending on the voltage that it outputs to the battery. But can you remember all those voltages? And who wants to hook up a voltmeter to their battery to check it? The RVProject.com solution is a dedicated battery monitor that provides a quick indication of the battery and charger by a different color LED. If the red LED is on, the battery is discharging. If the yellow, green, or blue LED is on, the battery is charging. That's all there is to it. Sure, there are other battery monitors that are available, but none do quite what this monitor does. But still, they work to some degree, and in fact, I've done videos on a couple of them, which you can find by going to my channel and searching on battery. And if you have a built-in battery monitor, such as this convenience center, on the battery, you can see where it shows 11.2 volts, 11.7 volts, and 12.3 volts. Well, that's way off. And just like the tank monitors, the battery monitor is not going to be sufficient. There are two problems with this monitor. The first one is that it's not very accurate because you see where it says 12.3 volts equals full. That's actually 40% discharged on a battery. So it isn't even going to tell you that it's less than full until the battery is about 50% discharged. That's too late to do anything. You should be taking corrective action long before the battery becomes 50% discharged. So it gives you a false sense of security that your battery has more capacity than what it really does. The second problem is that it monitors the battery voltage at the console, not at the battery, and that means it's inaccurate. The primary indicator of the battery state is one of four LEDs. The red LED shows discharging, the yellow LED trickle, the green LED normal, and the blue LED bulk. I also flash some of the LEDs depending on what's happening. For example, the red LED, which shows discharge, will start to flash when the battery starts discharging, and it will flash more rapidly as the discharge increases. There are several other patterns as well with the other LEDs, and it's kind of involved, so I'm not going to explain it here, but you should go to my website for the project, and I provide a full set of documentation on what each LED pattern means. The various flash sequences are a rudimentary histogram, and you can tell when your battery starts going bad by knowing how to properly interpret the flashes. So if you haven't figured it out yet, red means bad when you're on shore power because your battery is not charging. So you're going to have to troubleshoot, find out if your converter is running, if you've blown a fuse or a breaker, or perhaps you have a battery disconnect switch and it's somehow turned off. There's various possibilities, but at least you will know that you have a problem that has to be resolved. However, if you're boondocking, of course, it is normal for the red LED to be on because you're discharging the battery. And if the LED is blinking slowly, you know that you've used up 25% of your battery's capacity. And when it starts blinking fast, you know you have 50% or less charge on the battery. So you better figure out how to recharge the battery fairly soon. And if you look back to this chart, you can charge the battery with the tow vehicle by connecting the 7-pin wiring harness back to the RV. And this could be accomplished either in a boondocking situation, or if you're on shore power, and for some reason the converter is not working. I actually did that earlier this year when we lost power at the campground. I simply backed my truck up, connected the 7-pin cable, started the engine, and charged the battery for an hour. Of course, if you have solar power, that would be another option. 
And speaking of solar, the battery and charge monitor will even tell you if the solar system is charging your battery. How cool is that? Well, we finally have the monitor connected. And I typically recommend connecting the monitor as close as you can to the battery because that provides the most accurate reading. However, this attachment point is about two feet from the battery itself, so it is fairly close to begin with. And then also, right up here, this is the back side of the main battery disconnect, and it is four gauge wire, so I don't think I'm gonna have much voltage drop issues. And right now we're measuring 13.7 volts, and the green light is on, which means that the charger is on the battery, and it is in normal mode. So again, this becomes a nice little project to keep tabs on what the battery is doing in the RV.